What killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? I was in love with this man. He could do no wrong. To this day, I still think he was the best person I've ever dated. I he lied about having the sign off. There was no meeting with any structural engineer. He just didn't want to do it, so he lied. He cheated on me to check to make sure that he was actually gay. In modern women fail to pick the right man and they start the blame game. Be sure to subscribe and thumbs up on the video. Hey, does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? I just made a fresh pot of coffee. Does anybody want coffee? What killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? So when I was 20 years old, I started dating this guy and we got super close so fast. I was in love with this man. He could do no wrong. To this day, I still think he was the best person I've ever dated. I was so in love with him. I thought I was gonna marry him. The only red flag about him was that he hated vegetables, which to me, like if you don't like vegetables, grow up, but whatever. I was willing to let it slide for him. Um, he would always come over to my parents' house for dinner. He would hang out with me and my brother. We were so close, and he, but he never let me meet his family, which I thought was super weird. And you know, things moved really quickly. Like five months into our relationship, we're talking about like, we wanna marry each other. So I, I genuinely believed that this man was gonna be my husband. And I was like, okay, well, if you want me to be your husband, you're gonna have to introduce me to your family. I think it's super weird that I haven't met them yet because you hang out with my family all the time. And finally, he agrees to let me meet his parents. And we go over for dinner. His family's so nice. I'm like, why were you hiding them from me? Your family's great. Um, and his mom for dinner made us like some salmon and rice and broccoli. And he like threw a huge fit. He's like, mom, you know I hate broccoli. I can't eat this. And refused to eat the broccoli. I was like, okay, like whatever. He, I know he hates vegetables. I wouldn't have put it on his plate. His mom should have known better, okay? Um, until we were all done with our food. He only had nine pieces of broccoli left on his plate. And his mom comes over and is like, you have to eat your vegetables. So she takes the broccoli one by one on the fork and goes, here comes a choo-choo train, chugga chugga choo-choo, and puts it in his mouth every single time. One time she said, here comes the airplane, and he ate it. This man was 23 years old, by the way. Um, and at the end, he said, Thank you, mommy. And then he was driving me home and said, that's the only way I'll eat vegetables if we're gonna get married. And then I never talked to him again. Oh, so apparently she can't take some jokes. I mean, <laughs> it could be a joke with him trying to be always playful with the mother. We check the comment section. I think the guy deserves better. She's going to get cheated on all her life and wished she was with him. What killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? I'll go first. They are the reason I asked God to take my baby back. <laughs> Part of why I loved that person was because they gave me a sense of security. The first time we ever had a pregnancy scare, I said, no, I wouldn't keep it. We're not, we're not in a real committed relationship. We're not married and I don't want to be abandoned. So no, I wouldn't keep it. And they assured me that if something like that ever happened, they'd want the baby they would be my partner and figuring it out. And then one day, I was late. And then I was very, very late. And then I was sick, nauseous, and then it was time to have a conversation. And when I tried to have that conversation, they wouldn't even look at me. They grew so quiet and just waited for me to leave. They didn't say anything. And then ignored every phone call and text message I sent them for two weeks. So I prayed every single day that the ancestors would do what I didn't have the strength to do. And on the fifth day, blood. Oh man, um, you saw the signals. Uh, you saw a sign when uh, you had the pregnant scare, but still you decided to stay. You decided, oh, let's continue. Now, let's continue on this journey. And you end up being pregnant. Didn't take measures knowing that the kind of man that you have couldn't be relied upon at that particular time. Renovating a house with my fiance. I remember the specific moment that I realized it was over. The entire renovation, I had to take the lead on everything. I just wanted to pick like the tiles and the colors, but no, I had to find the contract. I had to schedule everything. Even the things that I signed to him, I'd have to nag him. We called him, we scheduled that. It was exhausting. He had no get up and go. No ability to manage his own time. He needed me to mother him. Do this, do that. But the real moment, 
sent was when we needed a sign off to knock down a wall and he was assigned that. I got the contractor to knock down the wall, but he needed to get the sign off from the structural engineer saying that it was not a load bearing wall. So I kept nagging him. Did you do that? No. Two days later. Did you do that? No. Two days later. Did you do that? Yeah, I got the sign off. Great. I scheduled the contractor to take down the wall. It wasn't load bearing. The contractor took down the wall. He calls me. The roof is caving in. How was that possible? My fiance lied. He lied about having the sign off. There was no meeting with any structural engineer. He just didn't want to do it. So he lied. It was at that moment that I realized this is not a man. This is a child. I do not want this to be the rest of my life. Peace out. Maybe you're always pushing the guy. The morning he wakes up, you're talking about it. Uh, uh, having lunch, you're talking about it. In the night, you're talking about, did you go? Did you go? In the end, when he's tired, I mean, he's going to tell you that he did it. So that he can have you off off his back. <laughs> you didn't give this guy some peace. Probably. So I was in a almost, let's say, three and a half year long relationship. This is with my youngest child's father. So in the beginning of the relationship, it was great. He was my best friend. He was my companion. It was it was awesome. And then things changed. He began to cheat. He was emotionally unavailable. And he really just didn't act like he loved me or liked me anymore, but wouldn't let me go. Mind you, we were living in the same house. So I became pregnant with our second child. And this was while I was kind of trying to figure out whether I was going to stay or whether I was going to go. But I loved him. I ain't even going to lie to you. Nonetheless, we were going through some tough times, but I found out I was pregnant. And when I told him, he literally told me, if you keep this baby, I'm going to leave you. He would not speak to me. He would not look at me. If we slipped up in the moment and shared a laugh together, he would immediately pull back as if he regretted engaging with me. And more so because I couldn't make the decision at the time of maintaining the pregnancy or giving um, the baby back to God. And I was young at the time, so it was very hard for me to make those types of decisions. I was already a mother of two, and I was in the process of getting my life together. But his behavior and how he treated me hurt me so bad. I probably knew I was pregnant for six days. On day six, I remember feeling awful cramps in my stomach. I went to the bathroom and so I cried and cried and cried. And a friend of mine came over and helped me um, pass through that miscarriage. After that, I could not look at him anymore the same. I didn't want him to touch me. I completely fell out of love and we were never the same. The relationship probably ended about a month and a half later for good. But I'm so glad that the divine made the choice for me instead of me having to make that decision for myself. And I know that my child will return to me um, at a later date. And I can't wait to kiss his little nose. But it broke my heart at the time, for sure. How come all of them, the stories ending the same that God took uh, the child from them or they give back the child to God? Like, how come? What killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? Nothing. If I loved you once, I probably still love you. And the truth of the matter is, I probably still miss you. But here's one of the best things I learned in life. How you feel about someone is not the same thing as how they make you feel. And it's all about respecting yourself always about respecting yourself the moment you start disrespecting yourself <laughs> what killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? it's not only the moment that i fell out of love with him this is also the reason why i've been single for five and a half years i don't hate him i'm not mad at him i actually feel really sorry for him but that's besides the point you need a little bit of a backstory okay i lived in raleigh north carolina at the time he lived in sacramento california we were in love or so i thought i ended up getting pregnant got really scared and he ran away um, and i told him listen i don't need you i can do this by my dad he loved me he wanted to spend the rest of his life with me all this other stuff i was 12 weeks pregnant i went to sacramento to meet his parents but not only to meet his parents oh we were looking for houses because at that point in time i thought that i was going to move there we were going to get married and all that other stuff so glad we didn't do that but i digress Let, let's keep going today i'm supposed to be meeting his parents he buttered me up and surprised me with a full body massage and a facial after that we go and look for houses and we go back to the hotel because i need to get ready to meet his parents reservation was at a downtown mexican restaurant 
at like five o'clock. We're supposed to be seven of us. But last minute, he tells me that three of them aren't coming, so it's just gonna be his mom and his stepdad. I don't think anything of it. Mom and his stepdad were supposed to meet us after Saturday mass. So we're literally sitting there at the table when we got the phone call five minutes away. He gets off the phone with her. I'm like kind of freaking out because what if they don't like me? He looks at me and he says, Megan, I have to tell you something before you meet them. I'm looking at him. I'm like, don't worry about this, babe. I've got this. Like, well, I might. There's something I need to tell you. Then tells me that not only was he in a relationship with another woman, he lived with her for over six years. That I was not the girlfriend. I was the other girl. And then when he found out I was pregnant, he ended things with her. The second that I found out, his mom and his stepdad walk in the door. So I have to act like I just did not hear any of it. What killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? I'll go first. I have to chime in on this in case it can help any young woman out there, okay? I'm old, I've been married three times and I have no intention, no intention of getting married again. John's my life. So after saying that, first husband, I'm pregnant with twins. Mind you, I've already given him a son, right? And I look over at him and I go, you know, you haven't touched me in a while. What's going on? I can't touch you. Look at you. You fat. You got cellulite everywhere. Ew, you're so ugly and gross. I want nothing to do with you. Pregnant with his twins. Okay. I knew right then the marriage was over. I ended up having another kid with him before I kicked him out. But she knew that the marriage was over. She ended up having another kid with him. <laughs> she broke up with him. <laughs> well, they were still living together. So guys, be careful out there. You might be thinking you are married and having kids. Your woman has already broken up with you. <laughs> Man. The second husband came out to me as gay. Now, as a heterosexual woman, marrying a heterosexual man, no indication whatsoever. Uh, this was quite a shock to me. I did not handle it well, I'm sorry, and I still apologize for it. But basically I said, you need to go, you need to get out because there's no sex life, there's no anything going on. Like, I married the wrong guy, it was a mistake, go find out who you are, okay? Please, with my blessing, I'll walk in pride parades with you if I need to. But he didn't, he stayed, and he cheated on me to check to make sure that he was actually gay. So really what he wanted was him to have the ability to go out and try all these new things because he had just come out, but wouldn't listen to me when I said, leave the marriage then. That's wrong. Leave the marriage. Go find out. I don't know what it's like to be in the wrong body. I mean, God, God, yeah, please, it's Canada, you're free to do so. So most importantly, my friend Mary Beth has gifted me this magical gay crystal that will finally cure my bisexuality. So I'll be able to move through the world as a full homosexual, finally. I will no longer be oppressed by my attraction to the male gender. So thank you, Mary Beth, thank you, magic and science. It's both because she's a medical professional, so it's definitely scientific too. So get ready.